Baba Manto Vetabelate. This is everybody's day. This is everybody's day. Our fathers are no longer known. And I mean known in essence. Known in the character traits that define their existence because songs have not aligned with them. Everybody's trying to pioneer something. As, but unfortunately, you came too late. You came too late in the agenda of God to be a starter. There was one who ran the race before you. And all of us must bite that humble pie to acknowledge that we came late. That every time Tolu Agola finds out that there's ease in doing what God has called him to do, he understands in Obomosho that he came because a man cried. I don't know who the man was. But when the cry of that man was heard in heaven, he brought me. That's what kept you in this city, my brother. Yes. The world has called, but he, we are here. Because there's a cry in the land. Sometimes we can't even consciously hear it. But you see, we have decided to explain our, our stay with something that is in the spirit and not physical. Because in the physical, there's not much attraction. Can I blow your mind? This building cannot keep me in the motion. You know why? I can bring all the documents to you. My wife cannot inherit here. She's not the ministry. My biological son has no peace in this building. Unfortunately, maybe I'm like Victor. I don't have an ambition to build a personal house because till now God has not promised me that you will build a house. This became necessary because he said build with me. So until he tells me to build a personal house, it means I may not be able to leave a house for my son. It's not being irresponsible. It's that sons are not emotional. Are you with me? The Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. How can you be as strong as SGLT and not have a ministry to immortalize yourself? He was not led to have his name hosted within the context of a ministry that he established. God decided to leave his name in the clouds and the name is louder than ministries. So there's no pressure. Is somebody with me? Our fathers, there's a cry from our fathers. And if your ears are open, they will hear it. The faith that was once delivered unto the saints has been tampered with. The right things have been, have been tweaked in too many places to give allowance to things that our fathers don't understand. If all your, all those who form the, you know, the company of your discussions are your mates, then you may not understand the evil day that you are in. There's a generation that is saying why the fathers not speaking. It's because they no longer understand. They no longer understand how you can incorporate strangeness and still call it faith. They show up. I was ministering in Lagos recently and I couldn't join praise and worship. Were you? No, okay, no, it was not your church. No, it was not your church because I would have discussed with you. But did you follow me there? No, you didn't come. You didn't come. I think we were supposed to meet before I went to that church. Uh, don't worry about the church. I know you can't know the name. So, it's not Pastor Prince. It's, it's prayer they used to pray there. So, I know when I stood on the stage, I saw that the wife of the pastor, she looked burdened. She sat through. So, when I came, I decided to give voice to her body. I said, we want to keep them in church. I said, before we see death, may they know the faith that you knew. And she started weeping. We are safe and complex. We no longer have strength in isolation. Our fathers were like missiles that God sent as individual men to different places. And in the days of the isolation, the kingdom still did not suffer us. Now in groups, the kingdom still does not advance. It's a sad thing. Like God began to seek glorification from the alignment of the Christ. The spirits of our fathers also cry out for visibility. 
Even charlatans have apostle eye of Babalola's picture on their signboards. Because if that you put it on a signboard doesn't mean you are genuine. It, it may actually be a shroud that you have used to cover the thing so that we don't know that the masquerade is a human being. And God is desperate because he will not look away from their sacrifices and has begun to awaken in the hearts of many who are willing to acknowledge that there is a dissatisfaction that we are currently experiencing. That it is not the will of God that we hand over what we have found to our children because this is not what our fathers represented. They seek advertisement and I'm crying to the Lord that we are the ones who will point their tears. You say, I don't have an amen. amen. It means you are not here. Jesus goes to the second verse because this labor in bringing glory to God was not designed to only find expression in the life of the Christ. There are deposits in God that guarantee the results of God. And so Jesus began in the second verse to advertise um, some, some kind of labor that God had authorized him to carry out. He said, as thou hast given him power, the word there is supposed to be authority, authorization, over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. This product was supposed to guarantee that this enterprise of bringing glory to God was going to be transgenerational. That anybody who embodied the life was going to come into the acknowledgement of the fatherhood of God. And by extension was going to operate in so much glory that God will be seen. I always say that there's a problem in this verse. Because if he had stopped here, we would have been in big trouble. We will have had to define what this life was from our souls. So Jesus goes to the third verse, which is the verse I really need, and said, this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. The first aspect of the import of eternal life is what interests me. Is that eternal life it's not just the experience of life without end. It's supposed to be life that occasions a knowing. That life is going to bring you into a spiritual corridor where you will need to interface with more than God. There will be other spirits trying to claim that they are deities of some sort. However, the workings of that life will self-eliminate all of your other options to a point that you can now acknowledge that every one other one that referred to themselves as gods did that in falsehood you are the only true God are you with me that acknowledgement for many has ended with the consciousness of what God is do you know God yes God is a provider God is a father. God is a blesser. God is a helper. To come to the acknowledgement of God as the only true God, however, goes beyond the consciousness of who he is or what he is, as the case may be, into the consciousness of how he functions. It's not just the consciousness of God's existence. We call that existential knowledge. There is supposed to be a journey forward into what we call the walking knowledge of God. Someone is wondering why. It's because from the first verse we found out that in the day that God seeks glorification, advertisement in the earth, that advertisement operates within the context of a partnership. And so you cannot effectively partner to bring God into visibility if you don't understand how God works. Can two work together 
except they be agreed. So that if two of us have been saddled with the responsibility to lift this speaker, I don't know how heavy they are. You know, I know you, you can lift anything. If you can lift a gun, then you can lift anything. <laughs> so, but I, I, I may not be able to do it alone. But if a situation in the similitude of that which was orchestrated at the Tower of Babel happens here, that I say in Yoruba Bay, and what he understands as Bay is Belen. It means that our expressions will be counterproductive. So there must be um, a, an interface in which we can come into communal understanding so that we can drive the activity. God, in knowing Him as the only true God, goes beyond. Your consciousness of who he exists as unto how he functions. And what we have come to unravel is one of the structures by which God functions when a dark day comes into the earth, the well of the fathers. Stay with me. Now, Israel began, I'm using, I'll use the book scriptures. Israel began a journey from Egypt. And if you have been a student of scriptures, you'll have found out that it was just a handful of them. Actually, only two that left Egypt as adults that came into the promised land. Not because God was not able, but because they were not, they could not acknowledge his ability. Unbelief. The psalmist in Psalms chapter 103, in the seventh verse, decided to summarize the totality of the experience on the journey in one verse. He made us understand that there was an experience that the children of Israel had and that that experience was a knowing experience. Somebody say a knowing experience. And that it was God who was the instructor. So that even though you saw one traveling company, what he was making known unto the children of Israel was distinctively different from what he was making known unto Moses. The children of Israel were not gifted partnership with God. And so in God's tutorial classes with them, what he administered to them was a knowledge of his acts. Unto Moses, however, who was called to partner with him in glorification, what he made known to him was the knowledge of his ways. So when God begins to expose to you the knowledge of his ways, it means that he has acknowledged you as a partner. And it means that you are no longer guiltless if a dark day comes. So tonight is implicated. It's a night to make you understand that it has pleased God to bring you. Some people went back home because there's no place to stay. I didn't imagine that first night opening the ark, the ark will be filled. It means on paper the ark is too small. And that's a big problem. Uh, we we'll could trust God for wisdom. He has chosen you. And the choices of God bring men into responsible existence. It's something I understand about spiritual things. There are things about people. I'm not a prophet. Every one of us is prophetic because we have a nature. If you are born again, you can perceive the things of the kingdom. So, sometimes people come to me and say, I have a problem. And when I peep, by the communications of the spirit, I find out that the one who is at the root of the problem is a very close family member. So I weigh my chances. A younger person will say, it's your father that is behind this thing. You will do more than solve the problem. You will also fracture the family. Are you with me? In Nigerian home videos, there is always the, a character called an evil uncle. Who is responsible for everything that goes wrong in the life of everybody. Remember it is evil but it is also an uncle. And so there is a wisdom to deal with an uncle that is evil. Because if he dies, he will also contribute for burial. Are you with me? So sometimes what I do is that I mask the culprit. And tell them, you can go. 
Especially when you understand that the one to whom...